On the 27th of January, I visited Professor Crutzen at his institute in Germany. We reflected on the global response to ozone depletion and lessons to be learnt for addressing the phosphorus challenge. Thank you very much, um, Professor Paul Crutzen, for joining us for the third Sustainable Phosphorus Summit in Sydney, Australia. It's a, it's a great honour and, and a pleasure to, to be talking with you now at your institute in Mainz, Germany, at the Max Planck Institute for Chemistry. Um, the first thing I'd like to ask you is, how did you um, come across this Global Phosphorus Challenge? To only two years ago, I didn't know much about this whole issue until I looked a little more in in uh, the, the data and saw, you know, things like uh, the peak uh, phosphorus, the terms which I had never seen before, but I started understanding what it means. And it, the, uh, it, it made clear that if we continue in the way we uh, are on the way we are now, we are up to major problems in the food chain. What led you to discover ozone depletion? Yeah, well, studies on the chemistry of, of ozone go back uh, to 1930. So, and uh, no, there was no sign of an in influence by human activities on ozone. Uh, it, it was thought that uh, ozone at that time uh, was. Uh, uh, of natural origin until about 1971 when it was discovered that uh, there was uh, additional loss of ozone and that uh, was due to uh, human effect and especially uh, the role of water vapor and uh, nit nit nitrogen oxides uh, on the chemistry of the ozone layer. That was in the beginning of the 70s. Later, it became known that uh, very aggressive uh, compounds, the so-called chlorofluorocarbon compounds, that their oxidation in the stratosphere gives rise to chlorine atoms and bromine atoms. And those are really very regressive against ozone in the stratosphere. That led them to increased studies of uh, ozone under the influence of uh, chlorine and NOx compounds, and the discovery that mankind was responsible for very strong uh, ozone loss. In fact, uh, the greatest ozone loss occurring over Antarctica over springtime. That was a big surprise. Nobody had counted on that. So there was the surprise of the measurements and then uh, the explanation why these measurements uh, indicated loss of ozone. And that led then, after 10, 20 years, to a complete banning of the CFC gases, the emissions into the atmosphere. What strategies would you propose to make the, the scientific knowledge on phosphorus more influential on policies? Well, to do good science is number one. Both industrial industry and uh, politicians gave very little attention to this new discovery, but uh, uh, good measurements and a good theory to explain the ozone loss convinced then at the end politicians and the industry to uh, admit that uh, CFC gases was indeed due causing uh, ozone loss and action was taken but it took about 20 years from the discovery to the actual action. Should we also expect to wait 20 years before politicians um, make the necessary changes or is there anything we can do, do you think, to, to speed up that process? Well, in the first place, uh, 
we, we should do research. But before we do research, uh, there is already one thing we can do, and that is uh, the to reduce the uh, use of uh, phosphor phosphorus. Uh, recycling very important you can do that without any knowledge of or detailed knowledge of uh, the role of phosphorus uh, in the agriculture food chain uh, you can do it now already we don't do not always have to wait until we know all the scientific facts in your view how important is the phosphorus challenge compared to um, other global environmental challenges that we're facing now or in the past? Well, I don't think we should play one issue against another issue. They are interconnected uh, through uh, the action of human beings. But and I would like to mention that phosphorus is probably a, uh, the most dangerous uh, of the layers uh, impacts on our environment and also agriculture. With reduced availability of uh, phosphorus, uh, we can s simply not uh, produce enough. What do you think needs to happen now? Do you think we still need further um, credible research on the phosphorus challenge, or do we need to? Um, engage policymakers and industry to start creating changes towards a sustainable phosphorus future? Interdisciplinary research mm -hmm. should uh, be emphasized to get more and more scientists involved and uh, so they bring the message forward with the help of journal journalists and so on. Is there any advice you'd like to give to the delegates of the third sustainable phosphorus summit? Yes, uh, pro propagate the, the knowledge, improve the knowledge, and uh, get in touch with politicians, which is starting to happen, but certainly not uh, efficient, efficiently enough. I mean, my role in all of this is, is to to make aware of the danger of the misuse of phosphorus. I'm not a phosphorus researcher myself. <laughs> I think that's fantastic. It's, um, as I said before, it's a real honour and a pleasure to, to be talking to you about what, what we um, phosphorus researchers and, and, and scientists and, and policy makers can learn from, from your experience with, with ozone depletion and seeing that issue being put on the international agenda and action being taken towards that. So. Oh, it's, it's wonderful. Thank you very much. Thank you.